All right, well, praise the Lord who helped me catch uh, all these fish yesterday. And I've been in prayer as I've been coming up the learning curve for how to fish more effectively uh, in the winter time because it's never been something that I've been good at before. Uh, but when I was in the boat yesterday, I was reading this Bible that my daughter gave me and I read this verse here. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will count, I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turn back, they stumble and perish before your presence. You have maintained my just cause. You have sat on the throne giving righteous judgment. So the purpose of today's video is to explain how I caught this mess of catfish uh, in the winter time. So I was fishing in Lake Oconee uh, in northern Georgia and the video is going to have several parts to it. Uh, this is the first part. Uh, the second part I'm going to be looking at some contour maps and some maps and some background information that I collected and uh, describing how I analyzed that to make my decisions. Uh, after that, there'll be some shots from the field. But let me mention that uh, almost often, if I'm, if I'm still fishing, a place where the uh, current isn't so fast that it moves all the chum out of the way, uh, I like to chum. I don't use a whole bag of dog food. I use a little six cup uh, container full of dog food. And uh, this happens to be the real kibbles and bits, which are more expensive. What I usually use is the Walmart store brand, I think it's Walmart, Old Roy, but it's the version of Old Roy dog food, which is uh, fashioned after uh, the more name brand uh, kibbles and bits. Just throw uh, six cups of dog food out there for chum uh, and then be on your way. Okay, in this part of the video, I'm going to go over the plan that I formulated that helped make uh, yesterday's trip uh, to Lake Oconee such a success. And winter fishing uh, for catfish can be a little challenging because uh, sometimes a fish can be a little lethargic and, and harder to find. And this is just a contour map of uh, Lake Oconee that I found online uh, for my research purposes. Because scripture says to be fruitful and multiply fill the earth and subdue it. But it also says uh, many advisors make victory sure and uh, that we can consider things and prayerfully weigh things and, and have a plan before we go out there and try and rule over the fish. So my first inclination when I was planning this winter fishing trip was to hit the uh, deep holes right in the neighborhood of the I-20 uh, bridge. Interstate 20 crosses Lake Oconee and in my research uh, you know hitting deep holes in the winter time can be a good strategy and so the the deepest holes in the northern end of the lake are uh, looked like they were dug out to get material uh, to build the span of I-20 over Lake Oconee so depending on the wind and the conditions uh, my plan was to sit and to put my baits either in the deepest part of the hole if that's where the sonar was showing the catfish were or on the ledges but when I saw uh, the weather report about a week ago the seven day forecast was for about a, a five days of really warm weather and lots of rain and so once I learned this I, I thought a better strategy would be to find the warm water so I started looking at the uh, USGS, this is the United States uh, Geological Survey pages for the rivers that flow into Lake Oconee, which of course are the, uh, the northern stretch of the Oconee River, uh, goes into one arm and the Appalachee River uh, flows into another arm at the northern end because with all this rain it was going to be a big influx of warm water into the northern end and I started to think if that happens the catfish are going to move uh, out of those holes and they're going to go up uh, to the warmer water and be actively feeding uh, in the warmer water and so here's a graph of the temperature 
of the Appalachian River uh, a little bit north of there. That, so this is the water that's flowing into uh, the Appalachian arm of Lake Oconee. So yeah, about a week ago now, it was uh, about 48 degrees. And then as the temperature started to rise and the rain started to fall, the water temperature of the, the river water flowing into the lake rose quickly. And note when I was fishing yesterday, uh, the 16th of January, uh, the river water peaked at about 60 degrees. So this was, uh, this was the information I needed that said don't fish the holes, uh, go up further upstream and uh, I was on the border between fishing the channel, uh, fishing the ledges at the edge of the channel, fishing the timber, or fishing a cove. Uh, so I was, I was thinking about it, but I decided not to fish those deep holes. Uh, here's some other information available at the USGS site. Uh, this is the, the discharge, pretty much how much water is flowing in the Appalachia River into the Appalachia Arm. And you can find similar information for the Oconee Arm. And it basically shows a whole lot of river, I'm sorry, a whole lot of water was flowing on uh, the 13th and 14th. And uh, the river, the flow rate of the river remained high uh, through the 16th. And you can just look on the page and there's some other information uh, available about the water that's flowing down in there. So when I went back to the contour map, I kind of forgot about the deep holes. I said, well, let's go... Uh, further north, and then I had to choose between the, uh, this is the Appalachia Arm, and this is the Oconee Arm at the northern, northern end of Lake Oconee, and I don't really have a great idea why I picked the Appalachia Arm. You have to pick somewhere uh, to focus on and fish. I like the fact that there were some uh, deeper areas in here. I like the fact that it was a little narrower, not quite as much room for the fish to spread out, uh, but in hindsight, all that warm water was also flowing into the Oconee Arm. I probably uh, may well have done just as well on the Oconee Arm uh, yesterday as I did on the Appalachia Arm. Now, I also consulted the, uh, the Google Maps, and Google Maps has some information that the contour uh, maps doesn't. It, it shows, uh, you get sort of the satellite view here, and you can zoom in. What I'm looking for on Google Maps is just to get a sense of the lay of the land that's not available on the, uh, the contour plot. It shows all the bridges, it shows the features a little better, and it shows uh, the boat docks. For whatever reason, on a lake as busy as Oconee, all other factors are created equal. I prefer to fish a place that's not doesn't feel like it's in people's backyards uh, with all the boat docks. Uh, so this is how I made my plan and essentially other than uh, just one of these upper arms where all that river water is flowing in, I, I ended up picking a shallow uh, sunny cove because once I got there I was looking on my fish finder and it also has the temperature graft and I, I thought that the shallow sunny cove would warm up uh, a lot faster than the areas more in the channel or in the timber. You know, to get tucked away in one of the coves that's in the sun and that water ended up warming up from 60 degrees when I first got there at 10 a.m. By the time I left at 3 o'clock, uh, that water was uh, 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and had produced uh, lots of fish. So uh, that's how I developed the strategy for my winter fishing trip yesterday at Lake Oconee. All right, a few tips on uh, jug lining places like Oconee where I was yesterday. And I picked five to 12 feet of water because it had been warm and that was the water that was the warmest uh, in the winter time. Uh, but the jug lines I, I was using are, are simple pool noodles cut into about one foot sections, about right to fit into the, the milk crate and store a bunch of them. Uh, but there are a couple things that I would I did right and a couple things that I'd improve uh, for the next time. So one of the things I felt like I did right was to have 12 foot of line on the jugs so they could be at the bottom. Now in the summertime in Oconee, you don't need your baits on the bottom. You know, we've effectively jug lined Lake Oconee with maybe 
oh, three to five foot on the jugs and the catfish will come up and get it in the summertime. But yesterday, I wanted the bait on the bottom, so I used the jug lines with the 12 feet of line. Uh, one thing that I would change though, is it seems like we lost more fish than we needed to. We'd see the fish pulling the jug down, nibbling, uh, and then it wouldn't get hooked up, and we'd go over, we'd pull it up, and there'd be slime on the line indicating a catfish, but no catfish on the hook. Uh, so one of the things I'm, I think I'd do more of next time is have more of the jugs with uh, three aught and four aught hooks uh, rather than the one aught hooks that we had on the jug, most of the jug lines yesterday. The other thing that I'd change is I'd put a little more weight on them. You know, we use uh, just uh, nuts from the, the, the hardware box uh, to weigh some of these down, and that's fine when the wind's not blowing, but we get a lot of windy days. Uh, in the winter time so either half ounce lead or uh, little bits of hardware from the toolbox aren't making it so I think I, I when I prep jugs uh, for future winter fishing trips I'm thinking I'm going with one or two ounce weights on the jug lines to hold the bottom uh, in a little more wind so we spend more time fishing and less time chasing the jugs all over the lake uh, that blew out of the cove and into the main channel now another important fact for picking a location for jug lining is you want to be in a spot where the current and the wind isn't going to move the jug lines from where you set them out initially. So yesterday we had sort of a 10 to 12 mile an hour wind uh, from the north or from the northwest. Uh, so we made sure that uh, the cove we picked uh, we wanted to set our jug lines somewhere that when the wind took over uh, they wouldn't blow into open water and then you have to chase them for you know, whatever it is, a mile or more, uh, once they get to open water and they're just blowing down. Uh, we set them somewhere where it was a little more protected from the wind and uh, the wind would tend to blow them uh, toward a bank uh, rather than the jug lines getting out uh, into open water. All right, well, praise the Lord. Not even done setting out all my jug lines. We were on Lake Oconee. I took a strategy to, uh, to set up on a warm day. Had warm rain for a few days, and the water up here at the north end in the sort of the Appalachia area, uh, 60 degrees, and I've already got a jug line moving off there from the rest of the group. Saw it go under. Uh, went to... Uh, the bait shop yesterday and got some shad so we're fishing with these jug lines on the bottom and uh, more or less uh, 5 to 12 feet of water um, time to go get that one I guess you know I was praying for wisdom and I was actually planning to fish in a different spot this morning but the Lord showed me this cove got one moving off well praise the Lord for answered prayer and I want to remind everybody to pray when you go fishing because the Lord can and bless you. Let's see what happens with that one. All right. Well, praise the Lord Jesus. He's answered our prayers here today with this nice, even-sized blue catfish. So the skunk is off, and I can catch fish in January in Lake Oconee, which is a first for the little drummer boy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, praise the Lord, he pointed me to a cove to go to, and I hit it and put a number of catfish in the box so far, but this is the biggest one, at least so far today. Weighing in at 10 pounds. You know, a 10 pound catfish is very nice. It's not really a, a trophy fish, but I'll praise the Lord Jesus and accept him, because I, I really fish more for fillets than I do for trophies. And the Lord's being good to me. Praise Jesus.